but, right, and one of the things that's interesting in these medieval texts where the, where the conversion and the institutional marking of it clearly are linked to each other are the ways in which texts often, I mean, not, not usually as spectacularly as the Mary Magdalene life, but often um, put some obstacle in the way of the institutional marking of the subject's decision to be a Christian, right? Whether that decision is you know, represented as um, sincere or not, whether that decision, as in, I was just teaching this week, Wolfram's Parzival, and um, the conversion of Therafites at the end of um, that text, uh, where you know he can't see the grail, so everyone says you have to convert because you know you can't see the grail because you're um, not a Christian. And Therafites says, but if I if I convert, can I marry Reponsa, who's the Grail maiden who holds the Grail? He seems uninterested in the fact that he can't see the Grail. He's fallen in love with the woman, and ultimately the answer is yes. He can convert. <laughs> if he, he can marry her if he converts. So he converts, um, and he is then baptized. Um, so you know that's a strange moment of conversion for us because it's conversion for courtly love. Um, but uh, but the baptism happens, and it has to happen before he can get the benefit, whether that is, and it is both things, seeing the rail and being able to marry Rapunza. Um, but the, but the um, creating a kind of temporal space between the decision of conversion and the institutional marking of it is something like, I think temporally, like what Agamben's trying to describe for Paul in this already not yet. So just one other example from one of these um, texts by a Jewish convert to Christianity. There's a Latin um, autobiography by someone named, before his conversion, Judah, and after his conversion, Hermann. So we call him Judah Hermann, or Hermann Judah. Um, and he decides, after a long um, period in this autobiography of, of rumination, to convert. And he makes that decision, and the decisions provide presented as occurring as this kind of moment of enlightenment, you know, in a kind of very striking way. And then we wait a little bit for his baptism. And he goes into the baptismal font, and the priest immerses him. And it's Germany in the winter, and he's cold. So he's immersed in the water, and he wants to leave. And he starts walking out. And everyone who's witnessing the baptism, all his Christian, new Christian friends and community, are waving at him, saying, no, no, no. And he thinks they're making a laughing stock of him. <laughs> um, but in fact, they're trying to note to him that he has to be immersed three times into the water for the baptism actually to be effective. And somehow, despite this you know, 100-page narrative of how he's been instructed in Christianity and decided to embrace the religion, no one's told him right, that he needs to be immersed three times. So you have this moment where you've worked through this enormously um, vexed narrative about him leaving his family behind, kidnapping his brother to save his brother from Judaism, um, being pursued by his community, being forced to marry a Jewish woman to try to pre um, prevent him from converting. So there's all this stuff that finally you think with this moment of enlightenment has been um, resolved. And then even in the moment when the baptism is happening, when we finally got there, there's the possibility that he's going to wander out of the baptismal font, you know, un, still unchristian, right? So I think I think um, you know, and that's there's been debate about whether this is actually an autobiography or not. I believe it is, and I believe most scholars of the text believe it is. But even if it isn't, um, it's a, a similar kind. I mean, a very different kind of text, but a similar kind of anxiety about this in between time, between when. Christ, the Christian is instituted, and when the Christian actually is instituted, right? Um, and and so I think that I think that that's a really rich space um, to to think through. Okay. Um, in light of the trans um, theme, I was I was concerned about one particular. I can think of two incidents of people who convert. And you would think business is over, but then they convert back. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. And, 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 you know, 
I, th I think one I think of, of Julian and Acosta. Uh -huh. um, and I think one of the real anxieties about conversion in um, through the Middle Ages is, um, on the one hand, conversion to Christianity shows something true about Christianity, but it shows a changeability in the person that means that stabilizing the Christian in that new identity isn't secure. Right? And there's always, I think, hovering over the convert, the possibility of the reversion. Um, and you know, it's, it, it's illegal in canon law to do that, right? You're, because you're a Christian, and then leaving Christianity, you become a heretic, right? So there, there are legal ways in which one try, the church tries to control that. But I also think that um, when you get representations, um, especially by converts of their own conversion status, it's partly, partly an account like this Herman Judah account is an attempt to um, address that anxiety and maybe even to address, you know, this is speculation, but even to address something in the convert's post-conversion experience of doubt in the community that he's joined about, um, about his new status. So again, another example, 13th century um, Jew who converts to, to Christianity, who we know only as Guillaume of Bourges, and he's not Saint Guillaume of Bourges, he's another Guillaume, but um, just we know him only from a, a set of three texts he wrote that are preserved in a, a single manuscript. But he frames the account, the first of these texts, which is a polemic against Judaism, he frames it with a little autobiography, which is how we know that he's a convert. And then he says his Christian community, his new Christian um, friends, asked him for piety's sake to write an account of his conversion. And then he says, when news got out that he was being asked to write this um, account of conversion, other people within the Christian community arose and said, you shouldn't write this. You, have, you are a Jew. This is after his conversion. Um, Judeo cis, so it's a subjunctive, but um, but um, you are a Jew, you are an ass and a dog, right? which suggests a kind of genetic Judaism that he can't have um, overcome even through this movement of conversion. And so he, but he's telling us this, so it's interesting, right, that he's, he's framing his whole text this way. And then there's a very elaborate, um, addressing of that charge to not to say I'm not an ass and a dog but instead to say yes I'm an ass and a dog but an a and he mobilizes a whole bunch of biblical material for this argument but you know a living dog is better than a dead, one, a dead lion right? there's a quotation from one of the wisdom texts I think um, and you know, David was the weak, abject person. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's fine. That's kind of a dramatic moment. <laughs> <laughs> and and yet he, he defeated the strong Goliath. And, you know, similarly, the ass and the dog, you know, are abject creatures. But we can speak as Christians um, for Christianity. But there again, there is some real anxiety about whether, as a Jew, he actually ever becomes a real Christian. And just the last thing, you know, this becomes a real big socio-political problem in the 15th century in Iberia, right, where you, where you have massive movements of conversion um, that are always under suspicion, right, um, always under suspicion, and yet are mobilized by the Christian institutions at the time, the, those conversions are desired, and yet once those, dis, once those conversions happen, the Jews have converted are subject to a scrutiny which always seems to suggest that they are not really converts and always could revert. So I think that's you know, kind of a, a problem that's at, at the heart of much of this material.